Hello everyone, the new coronavirus variant is out there and there is a lot of concern and various questions like What is the new COVID-19 variant? Is it more infectious? Has it spread across the UK? Will vaccine protect against it? Does it make people more ill? And so many other questions. My name is Dr. Asim and I will give you information about variant that will help you understand the situation. So let's see what is the new COVID-19 variant strain and how dangerous it is. By mid-November, while the cases of coronavirus were going down, there was an unusual finding in the part of London. It was sounded in the areas of Kent and Medway. The cases were rising despite strand of It eventually turned out that the rise in cases was due to new coronavirus variant. On 18th of December 2020, more data was provided to the government and as a result, government announced year 4 restrictions. But this is not the first time that the coronavirus variants have emerged. We have already seen a number of coronavirus variants, including L, S, V, G, G, R, G, H, and G, V, while all group includes all of the variants. All these variants are already in the circulation, but the new variant is quite different from the other variants. All these variants appeared just in the period of 12 months from January to December 2020. We don't know everything about the new variant. It has been named B117 or UVI 2020-1201. It's up to 70% more transmissible, meaning it spreads more easily. It could increase the R number by 0.4, scaling up the R number from 1.5 to 1.8. It is found in every part of the UK. Limitation is on the spike protein which the COVID-19 vaccine targets. So how the new variant emerged? It is important to remember that all viruses including coronaviruses can mutate or change over time. Viral mutations could have no or mild effect. But that was the case always. Sometimes these mutations can have very severe effect. Just like the one which happened with the new variant. So what exactly is mutation? This is how the coronavirus looks like. It's got an envelope on the outside. A lot of surface projections called spike proteins while the RNA is protected inside. RNA has got all the instructions which are required to make the new viruses. However, it cannot multiply at its own. It needs whole cells to make the new viruses. So once it finds a suitable host, the RNA uses the resources of the cell to produce new viruses, which eventually kill the host cell. To understand it easily, let's consider this simple example. All we needed ingredients and the right instructions of how to make a cupcake. Same is the case with the viruses. They have all the information on the RNA to make the new viruses. And using the whole cell resources, they can do it easily. Consider if you make a mistake in the recipe. For example, instead of 175 gram sugar, you add 175 gram of salt. The results won't be pleasant. However, if this change is minor, for example, instead of waitrose cheese, you add extra cheese, that won't have a huge effect. Yummy! Similar is the case with virus. A slight change in the sequence of the RNA can result in mutant strain. This mutant strain might not have any added bad effects, or it could be a completely different situation where the mutant strain could go horribly wrong. <laughs> so it all depends what type of mutation is it and what effect does it have. Let's see what exactly happened with the new coronavirus variant. This new variant has not just one, two, but 11 different mutations, which result in amino acid changes in the resulting proteins. And this doesn't stop here. In addition, we also have deletion mutations, which result in amino acid deletion. So overall, there are 14 mutations. We still don't know what exactly would be the effect of these 14 mutations. One of these mutations called N501Y results in chain spike proteins which are recognized by the antibodies produced by the vaccine. So one consequence is that the vaccine might fail or might not be as useful as it should be. This mutation has been found in many other countries including South Africa and Australia. Similarly, one of the deletion mutations at position 6970 affects PCR tests. PCR testing might not work. Let's have a look at some common questions about the new variant. How widespread is the new variant? So far, 144 local authorities have identified at least one case genomically, but most of these cases are in London, southeast and east of England. How long has this variant been in circulation? Based on the back tracing, it looks like the variant emerged sometime in September 2020 and then circulated at very low levels in the population until mid-November. Is there any evidence that the new variant is more serious? Not yet. However, continuous monitoring over the coming weeks will reveal. Has the new variant been identified in other countries too? Yes, in several other countries including Australia, Denmark, Iceland and Netherlands. 
is a new variant more infectious? Yes, about 71%. This is higher than for the other variants. May also have a higher viral load. And this indicates a selective advantage of this variant over the other variants. Does the new variant make people more ill? Well, it looks like yes. Disproportionate number of people have been admitted to the hospital over the last two weeks, although there's no increase in mortality yet. But probably it's too early to say whether the new strain would increase the number of deaths. Can routine tests detect this new variant? Probably not. Labs have been issued with guidance to adapt processes to ensure that the PCR test can detect this variant. Are children more susceptible to the new variant? Yes, in comparison with the known variant virus, there has recently been a general shift in the distribution of virus towards children for both the variant and known variant strains. This was expected because of schools remaining open during the lockdown. COVID-19 virus was not as efficient at infecting children as it was in adults. There are many hypotheses, but one is the expression of the ACE2 receptors that could be different in children. So if the new variant is having an easier time of finding and entering the cell and that would put children at more risk. Will the new strain respond to the Pfizer vaccine? Well, there's no definite answer yet. Theoretically, vaccine should induce a broad immune response. It is predicted that some of the mutations will affect some of the sites that are recognized by the antibodies. It doesn't seem likely that it will affect all of them. Definite answers will come following further studies. So far, there has been no variant that could make a vaccine less effective, but we don't know how this variant would react. And finally, what we can do in the face of this new variant? Well, the way to control this virus is the same, whatever the variant. So wash your hands regularly, wear face masks, keep your distance from others, and reduce your social contacts. Hope that video gives you some information and clarify some of the concepts. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe, share and like.